After a mission went wrong, mercenary Tyler is suffering from severe injuries and a concussion that causes him to fall over the bridge and into a river. Everyone thinks he's dead, but the currents carry his body to a shore where he's found by a little girl that immediately calls for help. Soon Tyler is taken to the hospital, where his care is overseen by his mercenary partners, the siblings Nick and Yaz. Tyler is deeply unconscious and almost mortally wounded so Yaz thinks they should let him go, but Nick refuses to give up. For many weeks, nurses take care of Tyler's body until he finally wakes up. He may be alive but still not well, so now Tyler has to go through extensive physical training and therapy to help his body and recover his health. Meanwhile in Georgia, gangster Zurab learns from his partner of Tandil that his brother David has received an additional 10 year sentence. Zurab gets in contact with the governor, who was the one to sign the sentence, and the governor explains that the Americans have a strong presence and that there is little he can do. Zurab then shares the story of his lifelong duty to protect his brother even against their abusive father, and the governor responds by promising to transfer David to an American prison. This isn't well received by Zurab, who reminds the governor he was the one to put him in power before killing him. A fight ensues with Zurab's men eliminating all of the governor's guards and Zurab disposes of the governor's body in a grave they had already prepared for him. Back to Tyler, the siblings come to pick him up to take him to Austria, where they've prepared a secret cabin in the forest with his belongings and his dear old dog. Now Tyler can finally retire in peace, but before leaving, Nick gives him a box with some special memories. From then on, Tyler sticks to a normal routine and enjoys the simplicity of watching TV, fishing, and getting groceries. One evening, he finally opens the box and cries when he finds all the old letters and videos of his now dead son. His child had been sick, and Tyler volunteered to go to war before the kid died, so his wife divorced him for abandoning them at the worst times. In the meantime, Zurab's brother David is watching a prison fight, but he can't enjoy it because he's worried about his new sentence and the consequences. Sometime later, he's reunited with his wife Ketavan and their children Sandro and Nina, who will be stuck in prison with him. Ketavan is worried about the children's upbringing in such a place, but David insists that Sandro must grow up under difficult conditions to become tough. Ketavan objects because she doesn't want her children to become criminals too, and David slaps her as he states that he can raise the children by himself, implying he can get rid of her whenever he wants. After David leaves, Ketavan bursts into tears and Sandro wakes up to console her. Sometime later, Tyler is returning to his cabin when he finds a man called Alcott waiting for him. This guy not only knows this location, but he knows Tyler's identity and everything about his jobs. Tyler shoots at a mug to scare him, but Alcott doesn't even flinch and reveals they have bosses in common. Alcott is here with a new mission. It turns out Ketavan is the sister of Tyler's ex-wife Mia, and they must rescue her and the kids from prison. David and Zura belong to a very dangerous gang called Nagazi, and the brothers are ruthless because they grew up during their home country's civil war, so they learn to become hardcore criminals as teenagers. The gang considers each other family, so they'll do anything to protect what they consider theirs. Tyler immediately accepts and calls Nick and Yaz to get their help. Afterward, Tyler begins training hard to put his body back into shape, using classic exercise techniques but also moving rocks and throwing axes to cut wood. Once Tyler is ready, he and the siblings travel to the prison in Georgia, where a guard they paid off has marked the right way to take with little drawings on the walls and turned off the cameras. The siblings wait outside while Tyler enters, and the guard informs him that gate 207 is unlocked before turning off the lights, granting him five minutes to extract the family. Very carefully and using a light to find the little marks, Tyler sneaks around and makes his way to the family's cell, where Ketavan is already expecting him. She wakes up her children and when Sandro asks about his dad, Ketavan tells him he'll join them later. As they make their way out, Nina accidentally drops her toy, which makes a funny noise. Tyler steps on it to destroy it, but it's too late, David wakes up and when he sees his family leaving, he whistles as a sign so all the prisoners that are loyal to him come out for a riot. The group runs away and takes the stairs, where Tyler has to break a door lock to reach an abandoned corridor. Unfortunately they end up in a cell surrounded by other inmates, causing a brawl to ensue. Tyler fights a few men of and is forced to shoot one to finally get them to back away, then he puts a small explosive to open the door, which saves them just in time before the prisoners try to attack them again. The group keeps on running and notices fights happening everywhere. Tyler finds an underground corridor and approaches a chute on the ceiling, through which they push the children to go outside and meet with Nick. However before Tyler and Ketavan can climb too, David shows up and attacks them. Ketavan is quickly knocked down but Tyler engages David in a very fierce fight, during which Tyler burns David's face against a furnace, breaks his hand, and then finally kills him by stabbing him. Ketavan also hits him with a shovel just to get her revenge. At that moment, a bunch of prisoners appear at the end of the corridor, so Tyler tells Nick to take the kids while he looks for another exit. While the siblings take away the kids in vans, the police come out to the common yard, starting a vicious fight against the rioting prisoners. As men begin dying all over the place, Ketavan and Tyler come out in the yard too, and decide to fight their way through. At first Tyler manages to keep people away with his weapon, but eventually he runs out of bullets and has to fight hand to hand, which gets him wounded. 
Ketavan tries to help by fighting with a shovel, but soon she's knocked down and everyone wants to grab her. Tyler has to fight multiple guys at the same time to get them off her, and when it becomes too much, he rolls over her to protect her and throws a grenade. When he stands up, Tyler is hit on the head and it leaves him zoning out for a few seconds, allowing a prisoner to take Ketavan away. Fortunately Tyler snaps out of it quickly and goes after them, fighting off a few cops and taking their shields to protect himself from the newly started fire. Tyler punches and kicks a few men away and finally reaches Ketavan, killing the prisoner before he can take advantage of her. At that moment a back door explodes, it's Nick and her people that finally take them out. Yaz warns them that they intercepted Nagazi radio transmissions and know they're coming after them. The group leaves in the bulletproof vans, and after blowing up the front gate, they speed away as Tyler instructs the children to wear bulletproof vests and hide under the back seats. At that moment they encounter the Nagazi soldiers, who open fire on them. A chase ensues Nick and her men shoot back and cause various cars to get off the road, but just in case Tyler still takes their vehicle through the forest. Nagazi cars keep on chasing them but also some soldiers arrive on bikes, who throw grenades at some of the vans to get rid of Nick's men. Only Tyler's and Nick's vans are left, and they manage to run over the bikers with a few crazy maneuvers, but soon an explosion hits Tyler's vehicle and makes it flip. The mercenaries provide cover while the family exits the vehicle, yet Nina's hand still gets hurt in the process. The group enters a nearby factory and runs through it to then jump on a waiting train that will transport them out of Georgia. As the train takes off, more Nagazi soldiers show up in helicopters, so Tyler looks for the extra weapons the train carries and counterattacks. Using a machine gun, he shoots down one of the helicopters and makes it crash into the snow, then he goes to the train roof to start shooting at the other helicopter. Unfortunately they shoot back and Tyler has to hide, so a few Nagazi men manage to jump into the train. Nick meets three of these men and begins fighting them fiercely with guns and hand-to-hand -hand combat, managing to kill them all and throwing another one off the train, but she also gets wounded in the process. Another group of Nagazi men goes after the family, but Tyler meets them and begins fighting them too. One of the soldiers almost pushes Tyler off the train, but Tyler is strong and pushes back to continue the fight. One by one, Tyler shoots every single man while Sandro watches all this death in shock. Once the enemy's lost, Tyler goes to check on Nick, who luckily is wounded but still alive. At that moment the helicopter opens fire on them again. Tyler retrieves a machine gun from the dead enemies and returns to the roof to quickly shoot down the helicopter, which crashes into the snow and explodes. Unfortunately Nick discovers the enemy has damaged the brakes so Tyler rushes back to the family and tells them to hold tight as the train goes off the rail and crashes. Meanwhile Zurab and Avtandil learn that David is dead. The soldiers tell Zurab the details of what happened, and Zurab can tell this wasn't done by their enemy gang but by someone else. Later, Zurab watches over David's dead body. After he remembers everything they went through together and how they defended each other against their father's abuse, Zurab swears he'll get revenge for this. Back to the group, they've all managed to survive the crash and as they begin to run away, Sandro keeps asking for his father. When he finally is told he's dead, he becomes enraged with his mother and Tyler. Moments later, the group escapes on a boat to then take a plane. Yaz gets in contact with some people that will fake new papers for them and leaves his phone on a table, so Sandro steals it. He then takes it to the bathroom, where he calls Zurab to ask for the truth. Zurab manipulates the kid and tells him Ketavan is the villain here, prompting Sandro to tell him where they are going. A few hours later, they arrive in Austria and hide in a hotel. While the women take care of Nina and Yaz arranges their next escape route, Sandro confronts Tyler. He says that David had put them in prison to protect them from rival gangs, and when Tyler points out David actually wanted to kill Ketavan, Sandro insults him by reminding him Tyler was never there for his own son. Meanwhile Zurab gathers a bunch of Nagazi soldiers and reminds them of the importance of protecting family, causing all the soldiers to swear revenge on their lives. Avtandil isn't happy about this, pointing out that Zurab is wasting precious family lives in petty revenge, but Zurab ignores him. Back to Tyler, he approaches Sandro on the balcony and agrees that he had been a bad father, but Ketavan has been fighting fiercely for her children, so Sandro should appreciate her strength or let David's lies consume him. Feeling guilty, Sandro confesses that the Nagazi are coming and suddenly, a helicopter appears in the sky while various Nagazi soldiers show up in cars. Tyler immediately warns everyone to get out and Ketavan discovers Sandro is texting Zurab to meet him later. Sandro says the Nagazi are his family, but before they can argue, the helicopter opens fire on the room, destroying every window. Tyler pushes the family out of the way and waits for the helicopter to be gone before they take the elevator. As the helicopter drops soldiers on the roof, various police cars arrive, but the soldiers on the streets open fire and kill the cops to keep them from getting in the way. Back to Tyler's group, they make it to the garage and when they enter the van, Sandro gets the chance to run away. Yaz goes after him while Tyler's group leaves in the van, but they find the way blocked by the Nagazi, who open fire on them and force them to back off. Sandro reaches the street and Zurab appears in front of him, shooting at Yaz who immediately hides. Both men try to convince Sandro to choose, but at that moment Nick shows up in another vehicle and the Nagazi shoot it with a rocket launcher, and Zurab takes advantage of the explosion to grab Sandro and get him in his car. 
Yaz helps Nick out of the van and they open fire at the Nagazi, exchanging a few shots before setting off a grenade and escaping back into the building. In the garage, Ketavan and Nina stay hidden in the van while Tyler fights off the soldiers. He shoots a bunch of them and fights hand to hand with the last one, pushing him against a car to kill him with a grenade. Nick and Yaz shoot a few soldiers outside before taking the elevator to the roof while Tyler takes Ketavan and Nina away in a van, but he barely manages to drive a bit before he's overwhelmed by enemy attacks. He has no choice but to stop the vehicle and join the fight, shooting as many soldiers as possible. A police helicopter arrives, but the Nagazi make it explode with a rocket launcher. Tyler kills a few more men until he has an opening, then he begins taking the family away on foot, managing to return to the hotel and get on the elevator right before Zurab attacks them. Meanwhile in a secret car, Sandro is worried about his mother, and Avtandil tells him that if he wanted her to live he shouldn't have called. On the hotel roof, Nick and Yaz try to reach the helicopter sent by their people, only to find it surrounded by Nagazi soldiers. Another shootout begins and Nick tells Yaz to go help Tyle while she provides cover here. Yaz goes to a lower floor where Tyler is fighting off even more soldiers but he's intercepted by more enemies, who he manages to kill and gets badly wounded in the process. On the roof, Nick also gets wounded and unconsciously falls with a soldier on the lower glass roof. The soldier quickly slips away, and Nick is about to fall soon. Tyler notices this and after killing the last soldier, he jumps through the window and grabs Nick just in time, but now they're both hanging off the edge. At that moment Zurab shows up and shoots Tyler's hand, but Tyler is strong and doesn't let go. Suddenly Nick wakes up and shoots to break the glass and leaves Zurab hanging on the edge too. Tyler immediately throws Nick into a room through the window, allowing her to find the family and kill the last soldiers before they hurt them. They reunite with Yaz and begin making their way to the roof while Tyler and Zurab climb up, starting another hand-to-hand -hand fight. Lots of shots and punches are exchanged, but when Tyler takes out his knife to end it, the glass breaks and Zurab falls into the room underneath. With no time to waste, Tyler joins the group on the roof, who are boarding the helicopter. Zurab shows up and shoots Yaz, but he has to hide when Tyler tries to shoot back. Everyone gets aboard and the helicopter flies away as Tyler tries to take care of Yaz's injuries, but unfortunately he dies anyway. Moments later, Tyler and the others hide in his cabin. Nick cleans Yaz's body while she grieves him, and Tyler takes care of his own injuries. Suddenly someone arrives, it's Mia, Tyler's ex-wife. The sisters reunite and after they spend some moments together, Mia approaches Tyler to talk. Tyler apologizes for abandoning her while his son had been sick, explaining he did it because he couldn't fix it and he couldn't stand watching him die. Meanwhile of Tandil tries to talk to Zurab, trying to point out how many soldiers they're losing just because of a woman. Now that Sandro is with them, they should try to move on. However Zurab betrays him and makes a soldier shoot of Tandil. Sandro is left in shock because the Nagazi was supposed to be family. A few hours later, Tyler's phone rings and turns out to be Zurab, who asks Tyler to meet him at the airfield by St. George's Church to negotiate, Tyler agrees but with the intention of fighting. Ignoring Nick's protests, Tyler arms himself to the teeth and heads straight to the airport, where he sneaks around to shoot a few guards and then blows up Zurab's plane. While Zurab and Sandro run away, Tyler starts advancing as he makes every vehicle in sight explode and gets in fights with any soldier that gets in his way. Tyler gets a serious wound in his stomach but still follows the path to the church, where Zurab is hiding with the kid. However this is a trap, Zurab has attached a bunch of bombs to Sandro and he has the control in hand, stopping Tyler from shooting. Zurab forces Sandro to take Tyler's gun and kill him to avenge his father, however Sandro freezes in guilt and fear. When Zurab is about to finish the job, suddenly Nick arrives through the back door to help, however Zurab uses Sandro as a shield and Nick has to put her weapon down. At that moment Tyler signals Sandro, who quickly takes the remote control and frees himself from Zurab's control. Nick takes out another gun and another shootout with Zurab and Suze, which gets her badly wounded. Tyler tackles Zurab to the ground and a brutal fight begins during which they use any object they can find around the church to hit each other. Sandro gets the bombs off him and brings the control to Nick as he apologizes, then Nick gets to deactivate the explosives. Tyler and Zurab continue to fight without mercy, landing painful blows and destroying their surroundings in the process. After lots of pain and punches, Tyler manages to grab a huge nail and begins stabbing Zurab over and over. Somehow Zurab still doesn't shut up about revenge, and Tyler finally reaches for a gun to shoot him in the head. Afterward Tyler rushes to check on Nick, but at that moment the Austrian police arrive and arrest them all. Days later, Nick and Tyler are in prison, and Nick is given proper health care. One afternoon, Mia visits Tyler and explains Ketavan and her children were given witness protection in exchange for information. Mia also tells Tyler that their son's last image of him was not of Tyler leaving them but of his father going to war to save the world, expressing that his son wanted to be as brave as him. Sometime later, Tyler is put into a car, but it turns out it isn't a transfer. Alcott is waiting for him and offers to get Tyler out of jail if he agrees to take another job. Tyler is hesitant, but he agrees the moment Alcott promises to free Nick as well. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.